Hey everybody, Dan here with Pain Free You. Today's topic is this. When has panic ever helped you? We'll, we'll get to that in a minute. It's Friday night. Hopefully everybody had a great week. Hopefully everybody's looking forward to a nice weekend. Relax your body. Breathe. You've got a 100% track record of making it through every tough day you've ever had. If you're having a tough day, you're going to make it through this one too. And it's temporary. It's temporary meaning the symptoms are temporary. So is life, by the way, but we're not going to go there. <laughs> um, all right, so when has panic actually helped you? Simple answer, I don't believe it does whatsoever. If you have symptoms and you panic, when has that ever helped them go away? Even if you have a legitimate illness like a cold or the flu or even COVID, when has panic actually helped you? It doesn't. One of the fundamental reasons why it's not a good idea if you're actually sick with some germs and you need your immune system is because when you are in the state of fight or flight, it is well known that the immune system is suppressed. It doesn't, opt it doesn't operate optimally. And so panic will not help you get better from being sick. Will not help you recover from a true injury. Let's say you break your arm. Panicking will not help you. As a matter of fact, it's likely to make the pain from the actual broken bone hurt worse. You ever see a television show where there's a car accident and all of a sudden the emergency medical techs come to the vehicle? What's the first thing they do? Sir, ma'am, calm down. We got you. doesn't matter how bad the crash, how bad the people are hurt. First thing they try to do is calm them down. We got you. We're going to take care of you. Why? Because panic never helps. It won't help the person in the car accident. It won't help the EMTs take care of them. Calm is always the way. So how does this relate to this mind-body stuff? TMS, perceived danger. Well, if the brain is turning on the, the symptoms and the pains as a response to perceived danger, panic is the exact opposite of what you want to do. Because at that point, all you're doing is saying, ah, I'm in danger. And you're perpetuating the brain's perception that you're in trouble. So panic is never, ever a good option. You know, one of my catchphrases is, nobody ever got better by freaking out. Nobody. I've been doing this stuff for a long time. been paying attention to it for even longer. I never met a single person who freaked out enough that their pain went away. It just doesn't happen. And panic generally causes symptoms to get worse. So make a conscious decision and a commitment to yourself. You're going to pull yourself out of the panic. When you notice yourself freaking out, just realize I'm not doing myself any favors by going into a panic, by being terrified, by freaking out, by diving back into the research, by telling yourself stories that say the doctors missed something. Oh no, I'm in trouble. What if this never goes away? You're in a panic. You're scaring yourself. That never works. So what you've got to do is really get yourself centered and say, you know what? Observe your experience so far. Observe your experience and see when my symptoms were the worst, what was my fear level? What was my mindset? Was I fully in despair and fear and just catastrophically thinking that this was forever? And think about when your symptoms were a little bit better. What was your mindset? What was your fear level? 
you will notice a direct correlation between you freaking out and your symptoms spiking. Panic never helps. So we need to take ownership of our response to what's going on and our experience with these symptoms. You gotta take control of that. You do not have control of the symptoms, but you do have control of how you respond. Your thinking, your emotional response, your physical response. This makes sense, right? Panic never helped anybody. Now let's take a little bit milder version of that. Worrying. Worrying. I have people tell me, Dan, what do I do? I'm worrying about a vacation that's coming up. Okay, when's the vacation? Oh, two months from now. And I'm like, why are you predicting the worst for that vacation? It's supposed to be a fun, joyous occasion where you get to take a break from reality for a little bit and go do something special. Worrying never helps either. It doesn't keep us safe. And especially if you're worrying about, boy, I hope my symptoms don't ruin my vacation. That also will never help you have a better vacation. All it can do is keep your brain perceiving danger and dreading that experience as opposed to looking forward to it. You know, a simple mindset for doing something that you want to do is this is going to be fun whether the symptoms come along for the ride or not. I'm going to have a blast. And what if it goes great? Worrying does not keep you safe. Panic does not make symptoms go away. Worrying and panic never provided you a positive outcome. Now look, let's be prudent. If you have something and your intuition says, ooh, this could be serious, get it checked out medically. You know, doctor. And if truly feels an emergency, go to the emergency room. Don't mess around with your health. But once you've learned what creates symptoms and you've done the assessments and you've determined this is what's going on with me, there's no reason to panic. Because what you've just learned is that the brain is creating symptoms based on a perception of danger. And that perception of danger is usually a mistake, almost always especially in chronic symptoms. Chronic meaning longer than, you know, six to eight weeks. Generally, things have become persistent and stick around a while. You know, the body heals from most injuries within six weeks to six months at the very outset. And so, if you've had symptoms for longer than that, your body's healed already. So, Pain. Panic never helps pain. Panic never helps symptoms. If you've got digestive issues, going into a panic and freaking out before you eat something, it's not going to help your digestion move well. Why? Because the stress response also suppresses the digestive system. Saliva production, digestive enzymes, things don't work as well as they should when you are in fear and the fight or flight status. Panic, worrying. Oh no, I'm going out to dinner. I hope I can find some food that I'll be able to tolerate. I don't know if I should eat this. And you eat it scared, worrying about it. You're more likely to have a reaction due to the perception of danger and the suppression of your digestive system. You know, panic never helps. Worrying never helps. Do your homework. Understand what causes symptoms. Understand that the perception of danger is usually false. Understand that this is what applies to you and make a decision that you are no longer going to fuel that fear with panic and worry and catastrophic thinking and more research wondering if the doctors missed something. Don't fuel the fear. Fuel the safety. So I hope this stuff makes sense. And people will say, well, how do I know if I'm fueling fear or safety? Simple question. Are the things I'm doing and thinking 
making me feel, ah, okay, I'm all right. Or, oh no, right? Simple question. Are the things I'm thinking and doing creating more danger or more safety? Lean towards safety. Things that make you feel good. Laughter, sunshine, petting an animal, hanging out with friends and family, laughing a little bit, doing things that engage your brain in something else besides the symptoms. I hope this all makes sense. So don't panic. And don't worry. TMS, perceived danger pain, is temporary. And it can be very temporary when you actually understand this and commit to implementation of consistent messages of safety. Now, I'm pretty excited. I, I had a great success story with a lady by the name of Jane from uh, Ontario, Canada. It'll probably take about a week for it to get posted, but um, keep an eye out for that one. She had 37 years of pain. She had significant improvement in a few months, and in nine months she was completely better. Significant improvement in two to three months. She implemented so many of the things that I teach, and she did it well, and she committed to it, and she she really got a handle on her fear. So keep an eye out for that. You can do this too. Speed of recovery depends solely on your speed of acceptance that you're actually okay and your speed of recovering from the fear. So it's a little teaser for that success story. Jane from Ontario, keep an eye out for it within about a week's time. And uh, I guess I'll see you tomorrow, folks. Take care.